Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a jack-o'-lantern with a witch hat. So I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas, of course with acrylics, and I'm going to get started right away. I have two colors on my palette, Brilliant Yellow Green and Titanium White and I'm going to be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the entire canvas a wash of the two colors and a wash background is really easy to do. You can just load your brush in the water and kind of tap it dry and then load it in the two colors, the green and the white. And I'm going to fill my canvas with all up and down strokes using a combination of the green and the white. So really simple. You just want to make sure your strokes go all the way across the canvas. The paint should be relatively thin because of the water um, from the brush. So we dipped the brush in the water and kind of tapped it dry. But I distribute a little bit of that water into that paint, kind of thins it down a little bit. Um, that allows your paint to flow nicely across the canvas and also be a thin layer. So I'm just going to continue doing green and white up and down strokes all throughout the canvas and the video is speeding up just slightly and you, you can press pause if you need to. Take your time and just fill up the entire canvas. If you're using a stretched canvas that has the sides, you can also extend the color on the sides of the canvas. And also notice that I'm not letting the green and white blend all the way because I like the look of um, some variation of the color in the background that makes it look more interesting. Um, if you don't like that look, you can paint it all the same solid color. That's kind of up to you. Um, or you can customize the colors in this background. Um, some other uh, pretty choices could be like uh, any color that would contrast the orange of the pumpkin maybe a gray color or maybe maybe a light blue. So I'm just going to go silent here for a bit while I finish up this step. So we're done with the background and I recommend waiting for this to dry first before going on to the next step because I will be demonstrating how to draw our jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to go ahead and draw here um, using just a regular pencil and I'm going to start by drawing the pumpkin first. So our pumpkin is it takes up about half of the canvas and it's a little bit above the bottom of the canvas. The bottom of the pumpkin's a little bit above like three quarter inches from the bottom of the canvas. And I like to draw pumpkins bump by bump, starting with the middle bump. It's an oval shape and it goes to about the halfway point of the canvas. So we have our first bump, which is a elongated oval. And then I'm going to draw this second bump. So I'm going to start at the top and kind of uh, make a curved line going down. And I'm going to repeat that and mirror that over here. So a curved line going down. And the bottom part kind of curves up a little bit. So we have three bumps. And then I'm going to do a fourth and the fifth one. So I'm going to start over here and make another curved line going down. At this point, I'm almost to the edge of the canvas and I'm going to mirror that. It doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical or pumpkin could be kind of uh, misshaped a little bit. That's okay. So we have five bumps and then I'll kind of make these lines a little bit darker. There is a traceable for this tutorial that you can download and use transfer paper so you can, um, you don't have to worry about the drawing if you want to do that. And then our witch hat is a, um, a wavy line so the, the bottom part of the hat actually overlaps the top part of the pumpkin a little bit. So this wavy line goes across the top part of the pumpkin. And then our witch hat kind of goes diagonal up.
and then it goes upwards and it gets thinner as it meets in the middle and then it goes it may go off the canvas a little bit so I'm just sketching very lightly and it goes down and spirals to a point so there's my spiral and I'm just lightly sketching this out this spiral has a shape it goes to a point very thin spiral and We'll have that one go a little bit more to the right. So I'm just lightly sketching this. It goes off the canvas a little bit at the top and then it's gonna overlap a little bit. I'm gonna have this hat go down and overlap the pumpkin piece a little bit more. So there is the basic drawing for our jack-o'-lantern witch hat. And next I'm going to demonstrate how to paint the pumpkin. So starting with the pumpkin, and our pumpkin has three colors. We have titanium white, cad orange hue, and cad yellow medium. So I'm gonna use a combination of those three colors to paint the pumpkin. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm using a three quarter flat wash brush. And just like when we drew the pumpkin bump by bump, we're gonna paint it bump by bump. Starting with the middle bump, I'm using titanium white. And the reason why I'm applying white first is because I wanna have some coverage over this green background because if I just painted it orange that green will still be showing through that orange this white helps to create a kind of a primed opaque layer and also I'm painting it bump by bump and I'm making the direction of my strokes go in the direction of the shape of the pumpkin so when I painted that oval the strokes were very long and curved and each bump it's gonna go in the direction of the shape. I'm also letting some of that green show through where the line of the pumpkin is. So I'm not painting all the way in. I'm letting some of that green show through right where that um, line is between each of the bumps. So this bump, notice the strokes are going in the opposite direction. So they're curving towards the left. And um, just using that three quarter wash brush, I'm stroking up to down, getting as close as possible to that line, but also allowing some of that green to still show through so that it helps to, um, so we don't lose that line between each of the bumps of the pumpkin. So there's my second pumpkin bump. And then I'll do the same thing to the third and the fourth pumpkin bump. It's okay if you still have a little bit of that green showing through if your white is not completely 100% opaque, that is fine because this is only the first layer of our pumpkin. It's just going to allow us to have enough coverage so that our orange and yellow is going to show up nice and bright. So you just wanna be careful on the edges, the far edges of your pumpkin that it's nice and defined. And then I'm gonna do the fifth bump over on the far right so same thing the strokes are going um, curved towards the right in the direction of the shape So we're done with the white base and it has dried a little bit and it's okay if some of that white is still not dry because it's gonna blend with our next color and that's okay because we want some color variation to happen with our pumpkin. So I loaded my brush with the color cad orange hue. I did not rinse my brush off, but I wiped it off. So there's still a little bit of white on my brush and is blending on the canvas here. So I'm gonna do the same thing um, same technique, only with the orange. So the way I'm painting this first middle bump is how I painted it with the white earlier. Um, so I'm applying the orange layer and it's gently blending with some of the white. Then for the next bump, I want that color to be a little bit different from the first one so it stands out. So I grabbed a little of the cad yellow medium color, the yellow, a little bit of the orange, so double load with the orange and the yellow. And I'm doing the same thing, but painting in the direction of the shape. 
And again, it's kind of gently blending with some of that white that's been on there. And I'm really defining that bump, that pumpkin bump going in that direction. Maybe go back over my first one, distribute a little bit of that yellow in there, but I really want those each of the bumps to kind of stand out here. So I'm gonna go and paint the next bump, the one over here on the far right. So I load in my brush with a little bit of the orange this time. There's still a little bit of yellow on my brush. So again, I'm curving those strokes to create that um, shape. And I'm not painting all the way to the far left of the curve. I'm letting a little bit of that kind of show through. So I'm not letting that paint blend in with the previous bump that I painted. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the right. So those are full width strokes going in a curved direction, letting that orange and yellow just kind of bluntly, gently blend together. A Little bit of white on the brush as well. So curved strokes going in that direction, getting as close as possible to that middle bump. There's a little bit of a line in between letting those oranges and yellows kind of gently blend together. And then I'm gonna do the far left one, same thing, yellow and orange, going in a curved direction, kind of making sure I'm covering all that white, defining the edge of the pumpkin by using the tip of my brush getting as close as possible to that line between this bump and the previous one on the right. Just kind of letting that orange gently blend with that orangish yellow color. And you can go up and overlap that hat a little bit because when we paint the hat in, the hat is actually gonna overlap some of that top part of the orange anyway. Um, you can go back and kind of touch up your strokes, but I warn you that the more you kind of um, paints and add more colors it may just kind of over blend um, and kind of all mesh together and turn the same color so we don't want that uh, we want that color variation and for it to blend but not blend all the way so kind of the unblended look um, next I'm going to go ahead and paint the witch hat so this is the color dioxazine purple and I'll be using a round brush for this this is a number eight round brush. By the way, you don't need to let your orange of the pumpkin dry. Um, it's gonna dry relatively fast here while we work on our hat. So I'm gonna load my eight round brush in water and kind of distribute it into my paint. So this is dioxazine purple. It's a very dark purple, almost a black purple color. So when you add it, um, it's gonna show up very dark. So I'm going to go ahead and define the shape of my witch hat. So I have my drawing here. It's going to overlap. A, lot, um, a little bit of that orange at the top. So I'm just taking my brush and I am defining that shape of the witch hat. Remember it overlaps the top part of the pumpkin just a little bit because it's got to look like the hat is on top of our jack-o-lantern. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the shape in. It's a large area to fill in. So if your, br if your round brush is kind of small, you may want to switch to a bigger brush as you paint it in. Um, you can use a flat brush for the middle areas and the round brush to define the outer edge of the shape. So I'm kind of uh, painting the shape of the hat and then painting it in solid as I go along. So it doesn't really matter if you wanna do the outline of the shape first and then paint it in, or you can paint it in while you're doing the outlines. It's up to you. So I'm just kind of outlining the shape here, um, the part that curls down a little bit. I'm going to define that shape. This round brush is nice because you can kind of press to create some thicker strokes, but it's also got a, a nice tip on it so you can do some thinner strokes where your lines go thinner. And I'm just gonna paint this in solid. There's a little bit of highlight that's gonna happen to this hat, but right now we're not worried about that. We're just worried about getting that shape in and painting it solid with that dioxazine purple color. So here's an area where you may want to grab a bigger brush, especially if it's taking a long time to fill this all in. My round brush is doing a relatively good job here. But um, the strokes are going in kind of a horizontal direction, but then right here they're kind of curving. And 
And then if your hat is going off the side of the canvas, you can take that hat and go paint it on the side as well. Kind of gives it a really um, fun look to the painting when it kind of goes off to the side of the canvas. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting in this hat, but nothing too advanced or complicated. So I'm going to load some more white on my palette. This is titanium white. Not going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to grab that white, kind of mix it with the whatever purple's left on my brush. So it's going to make a light purple color. And on the bottom here, I'm just going to paint this very bottom line with that purple gives that area a little pop of different color right there on the bottom. And then I'm gonna do one stroke over here where that curve is and let that stroke blend with whatever purple is not dry there. And then two strokes on the left. So it gives our hat some fun pop of brightness so it's not that same um, dark purple throughout. And then I'm just going in and kind of touching up some of my purple in there. Next, I'll be painting the ground of the pumpkin, and the ground was done with Mars Black, but very watered down. I'm gonna turn my Mars Black into a watercolor consistency. So I'm just taking my round brush and grabbing water and kind of distributing that water on my palette so that it becomes a watercolor consistency. So that thinned down black, I'm going to use to paint the table area and it's going to be thin and translucent. A lot of that green is showing through and that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. I'm just gonna grab my T-square to make sure the table line is lined up on both sides, but I'm just taking this layer of watercolor black and filling in the entire area. Does not have to be completely solid, going for the watercolor look down here. Not completely solid, so a lot of that green showing through the black, that's kind of the point of doing this. And I'm just filling in the table area, and eventually I'm gonna do a darker black just under the pumpkin, so that darker black gives the indication that there's some shadow under that pumpkin. So to get that darker, I'm just grabbing a little bit more of that Mars black um, to create it to be darker. So just grabbing the paint part of it and letting that paint part go into that watercolor area to get darker. So I'm just painting the shadowy area under the pumpkin. So right under the bottom part of the bumps is our darker black area and just kind of taking that brush and letting that kind of go in with the rest of that watery area of the pumpkin and then I want to do some a little bit of shading on the bottom of the pumpkin where it would be darker so I rinsed my brush off and I'm going to grab just the orange and I'm going to take that and redefine the bottom bumps of the pumpkin with the orange so take that orange, outline the bottom bump, but I'm also dragging that paint up a little bit into the lines that are between the pumpkin bumps. So there's um, a little bit of black that's kind of dragging upwards into the bottom parts of the lines. So it gives that part a little bit darker. Some of that black is dragged up a little bit. You don't want to drag that black to create the line all the way to the top, but just a little bit upwards into the pumpkin. So we have our pumpkin sitting on a table, a little bit of a darker area below, and I did the redefine the bottom of the bumps. I'm gonna do the shadow at the top because the hat's on the pumpkin, the little bit of shadow would be showing through. Um, so I'm taking the watered down black, so just like the table area, and I'm just doing kind of a black shadowy area below the hat. Um, I recommend that the orange of the pumpkin dry because the watercolor right here is going to kind of seep into the orange if it's not dry all the way and it's going to kind of create some un, um it's going to the water is going to allow that orange to kind of lift off so we don't want that like right here you can see that orange is lifted off so make sure your orange is dry all the way before you do the shadowy area the shadowy area was done with watered down black and i just used my brush to just kind of create a shadowy area right under the hat and i just went back and kind of 
redefined some of the orange lines that are going down. And then I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and do a line on the very bottom of the hat to define that hat bottom. Okay, so we have our hat, our pumpkin, and this part of the pumpkin has to be dry um, before we can start doing our face. So if you feel confident just painting your face in, go ahead and do that. Um, if it helps, you can get a piece of chalk to draw the face in first and um, then paint it in. But I'm going to go ahead and just start doing the face. So we have two triangles for the eye. So I'm just using the tip of the brush and the black. I'm outlining the shape of both of the eyes and the pumpkin has form. So the shape of the eyes would be kind of going curved. So you do the shape and then you fill it in solid with black. So again, if you're not feeling confident just painting these eyes in, um, I highly recommend drawing them lightly with a pencil or a piece of chalk. And uh, that way you can erase if needed. And then once you get the face that you like, you can go ahead and paint that face in. So each of the shapes of the face are gonna be painted in with the black. And I'm still using that number eight round brush. Um, Traceable also has the face in it. So the blog post that I write for this tutorial um, gives you some tips on what you can do with the traceable if you're using the traceable, including um, outlining the traceable with a Sharpie. The lines of the Sharpie will show through the first um, few layers of paint. So you'll still be able to see the face if you initially outlined your traceable with a Sharpie. Um, so that's an option you can go. Um, and then, so we have both of our eyes painted in. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our jack-o'-lantern can be kind of whimsical and um, not, the eyes don't have to be symmetrical. And then, so our nose, really simple triangle shape. The top of that triangle um, goes a little bit above the bottom part of our eyes. You want to make sure um, that you're going to give yourself enough room for the mouth of the jack-o'-lantern. And so the mouth Again, just still using the tip of that brush to kind of outline my shape of the mouth. So it um, diagonal line goes upwards and then it goes down with three triangular lines in the middle and going back up on the right. And then this piece is going down and same thing. So I'm creating this as a shape. And then this one's gonna go up and kind of be opposite of those three triangular lines that I created. And then it's gonna go back up. And then, so once I have my shape in, I can go ahead and fill that in solid black. So take your time with this. It helps sometimes add a bit of water into that black. Helps to get it to flow a little bit better when painting these black shapes in solid. Next, I'll be painting the white band that is on the witch hat. And so I'm gonna load my palette with some fresh titanium white and use the three quarter inch flat wash brush to load the white right there on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna use the full width of the brush to paint the white um, area of the hat all the way across. So Just gonna take that. It's gonna curve a little bit because that hat has um, some form dimension to it. So it's kind of curved a little bit, but it's white all the way across. Use the tip of the brush to define that shape and on the edges as well. And if you want it to be a little bit thicker, you can make it a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to take that white, kind of extend it up just a little bit more. 
And when this dries, I'll be applying the little black polka dots, but that's gonna dry first. I'm gonna do something fun to the background next. And so this is optional, but I it's fun and um, pretty and whimsical. Um, basically, I'm using one of those circle sponge pouncers, the Martha Stewart brand pouncer. It's just a cylinder sponge. And I'm gonna load it with some uh, fresh, brilliant yellow green and a little bit of white. And I'm gonna take that foam circle that I'm gonna press and turn. It's gonna create a very subtle looking circle. Um, I don't want it to stand out too much because then the background would be way too busy if this was like a brighter or darker color. So that's why I'm using very subtle colors for this. So you can add a little bit of yellow into it if you want. Um, definitely the main color should be that brilliant yellow green that helps the colors be very subtle in the background. But it just adds a really um, pretty sort of um, whimsical effect in the background. So I'm just gonna press and turn that sponge kind of all throughout the background. So notice how some of the circles are overlapping each other. Some circles are going off the edge of the canvas. Um, you can even be really careful and have some of those circles go really close to some of the edge of the hat or the pumpkin. Um, you can even do it on the sides of your canvas if you want. So just fill it up because a really pretty abstract looking background and um, some interest to look at. But again, very subtle colors, so it's not taking over the contrast. It's um, kind of matching the background, but not making it too busy looking. Next, I'll be painting the black polka dots on the band of our witch hat, so make sure that white is dry. And this is the number eight round brush and Mars black. So I'm just gonna paint small circles all throughout this white area. So do the circle and then fill it in. So make them, you can make them different sizes. So you can do big ones and small ones. You can go um, have some of the dots on the edges. So really simple and fun. If you wanted to, you can use the little foam pouncer. So if you bought the Martha Stewart pouncer sets, that had it comes with different size circle pouncers. So if you wanted to use the smaller one for this step, um, you can. I just found it easier to just paint the circles in with the brush. Next, I will be doing the highlighting on our face shape. So this is optional. If you wanna skip this step to simplify the painting, you are more than welcome to. So I have fresh titanium white on my palette. I'm gonna rinse my number eight round brush off. And so on the left side of each of the shape, I'm gonna do a thick line. So over here on the left side of our triangle, just on the inside part, I'm gonna take that and make a thick line, and also on the bottom part too, just on the inner part of that thick white line. So I'm gonna repeat that for each of the shapes. So again, a thick line on the left side, and also on the bottom. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the nose. So thick line on the left and thick line on the bottom. 
and then same thing with the mouth so just on the left part and then I'm actually going to do the entire mouth the entire bottom part of the mouth so um, that thick line is going to go up on each of those triangle pieces on the bottom And then it's going to go up on the right as well. And then I just did a quick dry brush on the top part. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, this is also optional, but I wanted to add a little bit of yellow over that, over those thick lines that I painted. So just with the CAD yellow and just barely distributing that yellow into what I painted. I'm not covering all of my white. I'm just kind of dry brushing over it. So it's just lightly blending with that white. It's not completely giving it full coverage. Just one stroke. Next I'll be painting the spider web and these are very thin lines so I'll be using a 10-0 liner brush so it's a detail brush. It has the longer brush bristles and that's going to help create these very thin lines. So I'm loading it into Mars Black, slightly watered down Mars Black so that my paint will flow but you don't want it um, to be the watercolor consistency. You just want it to be kind of an ink consistency so it's opaque and solid and a little bit flowy. So I'm just kind of painting over that part where that pouncer covered part of that hat. But I'm going to take this and create a spider web. So do, to do the spider web, I did a vertical line and then a horizontal line. So this is kind of embedded in the curled part of the hat. So vertical line, horizontal line. The lines don't have to be perfect. They can be wobbly. They can be thick and thin. Um, and then diagonal lines going through both of those vertical lines. Okay. So I, two, um, so I did diagonals and the two diagonals and two uh, a vertical and a horizontal. And then in between each of those uh, triangular areas, I'm doing a curved line. So look at the direction of that curved line. It's, um, the curve is going towards the center. So I am going to do another set of curved lines. So they're kind of meeting together. So curve uh, to make that webbed line. And then another curve. And then another curve. And then if I wanted to, I can go back around with another set of curves but I'm actually going to make the line for our spider. So this line is vertical, but a little bit wavy. It doesn't have to be a, a completely vertical. So a little bit wavy, go down as much as you would like. Um, so kind of envision where that spider is gonna be. You need to give them enough room to have the body and the legs. So you don't want it to go too far down. Um, so he's gonna be kind of dangling. If you want, you can have him kind of sitting on the hat too. So do a little circle. And then paint that in solid black. And then spiders have eight legs, so you can do four legs on each side of that circle. So I'm gonna do four legs, so just these little curved lines for the legs, and do four on the left side. And then I would wait for that to dry before adding any of the eyes on that um, the spider. But um, since I have this liner in the black, I'm actually going to go ahead and add our little branches that are um, on the left side of the hat. So there's this uh, jaggedy branch thing that is a decoration of this hat. So I'm just taking that liner brush and painting branches. So these branches are going to be holding some of the fall leaves. Um, you can definitely customize this if you don't want to do the fall leaves, if you don't want to do the branches, if you want to put other things hanging out of the hat that is um, up to you. But I thought it would be fun to add some 
decorations on the hat. So there's my branchy piece. And then on the right side, we have some vines, some pumpkin vines that are kind of sticking up through the hat and sticking down under the hat. So I actually loaded a new green on my palette. This is Hooker's Green Hue. It's a darker green, so it's gonna stand out from our light green in the background. So I'm just gonna use the liner brush and I mixed that green with white to um, give it some opacity um, and also some color variation. And I'm just doing a curvy vine that is coming out underneath the hat and somehow some way it's coming up through the hat as well, or maybe it's behind and up, we, um, we don't know. So, but it's fun and um, adds to the whimsical fun effect of this painting. So spiral lines kind of going off the canvas. This is a really little brush, so I might have um, done better switching to a larger round brush for this, but um, I'm making it work. So there's the pumpkin vine. And then I want to do some leaves on my pumpkin vine. I actually grabbed a bit of white and add some color um, pop into some of those vines with that white. I'll do it down here as well. Let's that pop a little bit better. And then our leaf, I'm gonna do a vertical line and then on the tip of that vertical line, I'm going to create a little leaf shape and I'm going to do these little um, oval pointed leaf shapes on each side. So there's two on each side. And the middle line is where they meet together in the middle. Grabbing a little bit of that white in there. The white's not mixing with that green very well here. Kind of forcing it to mix together. So keep the leaves really simple. You don't have to do anything elaborate or complicated unless you want to. And then I can do several leaves. I'm gonna actually just mix that green and white together on my palette here to get kind of a medium green color. And maybe I can have some fun and add some yellow into it since there's yellow on my palette as well. Kind of a, a yellowish green color. And then I can find another place for another leaf. Maybe there's another leaf going this way. So vertical line first and do your first leaf shape and do a, a set of two on each side of that vertical line. And then these leaves can be bigger too. The leaves are actually kind of small in proportion to the rest of the pumpkin. But if you wanted to do bigger leaves, you can do bigger leaves. So I'm gonna do another leaf over here. So you can do as many leaves as you want or, as, or just do no leaves. It's completely up to you. So we also have the fall leaves on the left where those um, branches are. And I um, used red for those leaves. So this is the first time red is showing up on our palette. This is Cad Red Medium Hue. And I'm gonna go back to my eight round brush here. Um, I'm just going to do um, the simple fall leaves. So I, it's very, very much the same way I did the pumpkin leaves. So the center leaf, and then I did two on each side. And then you can do different kinds of leaves if you wanna just do a rounded and pointed shaped leaf. Doesn't have to be anything too advanced because it's just a small decoration in the painting and not really the focus of the painting. So if you want some of the fall leaves to overlap the hat, I recommend um, adding some white into it so that your red will show up um, brighter against that. It gives it some contrast. So adding that white in there is gonna allow that color to show up against that dark purple color. So just doing some very basic rounded oval um, pointed shaped leaves. We'll do a variety of different kinds of leaves in there. Um, if you want, you can do berries, so you can do little dots on the tips of the branches, but I just did leaves. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna switch back to my little liner brush and go in there and do some of the veins on the leaves. So I'll get that brush kind of rinsed off, grab black, and I'm just doing the lines on these. So line down the middle and diagonal lines on each side, line down the middle, diagonal lines on each side. I think I did two diagonal lines on each side. And then same thing, lying down the middle. So I did that to each of the leaves and I did it to the fall leaves as well. Lying down the middle, diagonals, lying down the middle and diagonals. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and do that to each of your leaves. Our spider is likely dry by now, so I'm going to uh, get the brush. I'll use the liner brush for this, the little detail brush and white. I'm just gonna do two little dots for his eyes. And then you can wait for that white to dry and then do a little black dot inside of there. A toothpick or even the back of a paintbrush would work for this step as well because they're little tiny dots. And then maybe I can just grab, um, take that white a few little highlights on some of the leaves to get them to pop a bit. Little touch-ups on the, the face. Maybe a quick little highlight on the left. It's just a few touch-ups. And our painting is almost to its conclusion. This was a fun Halloween design. I love doing Halloween and fall paintings. There's a lot of variety that you can do with this painting. I'm just gonna do the little black dots in the middle of the spider. And that is it, my friends. Thank you for watching and thanks for painting with me. I hope that you enjoyed the jack-o'-lantern with the witch hat. And thanks again, bye.